being alert, being aware, being conscious is to be alive. There is no disconnection. If you want to know what aliveness is, if you want to know what life is, if you want to get to the bottom of life, you have to get to the bottom of awareness. What is this awareness? What is it to be aware? What is it to be conscious? What am I doing with this consciousness? Why am I not doing something with it? If it is so clear that unconsciousness is death and consciousness is life, what if I become consciousness itself? Then, is there any necessity to fear death? Is there any necessity to cope with the fear of death? Not at all. And that is the way and that is the only way. To become consciousness, to become what you already are, to become what you have forgotten, is to go beyond the fear of death. It is possible because deep down, death is not real. It's only at the surface level. The waves are falling and rising. When a wave is rising, it mimics life. It is moving, it is going up, it has energy, it has momentum. And when it's coming down, it resembles death. It seems like it has lost all desire to stay at the top. It is just falling. Life forms are waves on the ocean of consciousness. They come and go, they come and go. For the one who knows that there is some depth to life, all these waves are on the surface. Let me see if there is some inside. Let me see if there is a depth to this waving process. If you're able to get to that depth, you will see that there are no waves there because there are no forms. There is no rising and falling of the wave. There is just one entity there. How can it be death? For death to exist, life has to be there as a process. Death is putting an end to the process of life. Without life happening, without the process of life being the other dimension of death, death has no meaning. Two sides of the same wave. So as long as you're attached fully to the body and the mind and see yourself as nothing more than this waving life, life form, there is no way to go beyond the fear of death and there is no way to cope with the fear of death. You can cover it up, but deep down, the fear of death will always be there. But once you sink to a certain depth of your being, what you will find there is life that is not a process. Life that is aliveness itself, consciousness itself. Life that does not need any external support to exist. Once you connect with that, you will know this is the part of me that cannot know, cannot experience what death is. Now that part of me that's on the surface, my mind, my body, it is impossible for them not to fear death because they are perishable by nature. They have no control over that movement that brings the wave down because they did not create the movement upwards. It just happened. Our entire life is the falling of the wave. We keep on wondering, why are we unable to control our lives? Why can't we reverse aging? Why can't we create some kind of miracle technology 
that cures all diseases, takes care of all physical ailments, and helps us to live hundreds and thousands of years. Why are we so helpless? Why are we so powerless when it comes to the actuality, which is life? It's because you are only one half of the process. You are only experiencing one half that you recognize as life. Form, movement, change. It's all one part of life. The other part of life that has put you here is somewhere deep down inside you. You've not begun your journey towards that. You're not even asking the right questions. You are worried too much about what you're going to lose. You're not thinking about what you actually are. How can you find certainty on this side if one half of your being is totally hidden? And the most important part of your being, part of your being that is the source of everything. Getting to that other side is meditation, is mindfulness. Meditation and mindfulness are not just to relax. It is not just to get rid of a little bit of stress. Yes, they do that as well. But mainly, they are tools and techniques to become life itself. To become one with consciousness, with aliveness. Nietzsche says, Many die too late and some die too early. Yet strange sounds the precept, die at the right time. Die at the right time, so teaches Zarathustra. To be sure, he who never lives at the right time how could he ever die at the right time? Would that he might never be born? Thus do I advise the superfluous ones. But even the superfluous ones make much ado about their death. And even the hallowest nut wants to be cracked. Everyone regards dying as a great matter. But as yet, death is not a festival. Not yet have people learned to inaugurate the finest festivals. Death is a celebration. It is a festival. It is not something to be feared. It is not something to be dreaded. But only for the one who knows what death is. Who has understood death is nothing but life. For the one who sees death as death, as something separate from life, how can it be a festival? How can it be a celebration? It is the worst of things. Every moment of his life is a struggle to avoid it. This doesn't mean the one who has understood death is willfully wanting to die. Now that is the difference. The one who knows what death is, is in no hurry to die. At the same time, he has no fear of death. Because he sees only life. When he's doing nothing, he sees life. When he's doing something, he sees life. In pain, he sees life. In pleasure, he sees life. In triumph, he sees life. In failure, he sees life. When life is life everywhere, and that's the only thing there, why would you be in a hurry to die? And why would you try to run away from death? Of course, you will still guard yourself against death, the death of the body, the death of the mind, because they are still beautiful expressions of life. Play with them for as long as you can. But there is no need to cling to life when it has no purpose. Because we do not understand what death is, we do not understand what life is, we prolong it even when we are unbearably suffering, we are unable to cope with the pain, but still we don't want to make that decision because we simply don't know 
what's on the other side. If only people are introduced to the right understanding of life, they will fear that pain, that suffering, that prolongs death more than death itself. Because the more you suffer, the more pain you experience, and you are unable to get back to health, you know there is no possibility to get back to health. But if you are continuing to prolong that suffering, that suffering gets imprinted in your mind. It, it gets imprinted in your psyche. It makes your transition painful and also your continuity painful. That is why peaceful death is the best death, the ultimate death. If you can quietly die in your sleep, if you can quietly die out of old age, or when you know it is impossible to live now, and there is only suffering and suffering, there are all kinds of things. Let's say there is some weird illness you're diagnosed with where you're losing your mind. At what, what point in time will you say, I am not me anymore? And when you can say that, I am not me anymore, I'm becoming someone else, something else, I want to go peacefully while I can still be me. We don't even have this concept. This discussion itself sounds very negative to people. What are you saying? Especially if it is not you who's going through the experience. If your parents or your children or your loved ones are going through that experience, you cannot even conceptually accept a solution that death can be a solution. Because as much as they are clinging to life, you are clinging to life through them. In those moments, even your sense of compassion loses all its bearings and direction. You know your loved one is suffering, but still you don't want to let go of them. You want to prolong their suffering. What is the meaning of compassion there? To help someone you love. Misunderstanding of death turns all concepts of life upside down. Meaning of love, meaning of compassion, meaning of kindness. They don't mean anything if you do not understand death. 